All right, Aquatic Arts was just delivered. The UPS man just dropped it off. And uh, it's a nice 70 degrees today, so it's like perfect fish delivering weather. Let's get it inside and unboxed. All right, the shrimp are in their tank and they're off to the races, hanging out. So we'll feed them soon after we just put them in, but I'm gonna let them acclimate for about an hour and then we'll feed them some of the food that they uh, gave us at Aquatic Arts to try feeding them. But even in a tank this small, you can really enjoy them and some will breed uh, within a tank this small. Now the bigger the tank you give them, the more space they have to breed and the more babies they're gonna have. But they will still breed in a tank like this and with a grade this high uh, of shrimp, I think it's just really fun to watch them and see how colorful they are and see them crawling in and out of uh, the aquascapes that you build them. Uh, and at this size, you can literally pick up this tank and bring it with you, move it to a desk, move it into another room, whatever it is that you need to do. It's super handy and uh, super fun. To take care of all right everybody so i've been a long time customer now going on over five years uh with aquatic arts as they've grown my channel's grown and i also decided to reach out to them and start saying you know can i review your products and over time i started getting things sent to me to review and uh, i still buy things there with my own money but this happens to be sent to me by aquatic arts However, we ran it through just like a normal transaction, so it get packaged like a normal thing. Uh, and this is what their um, shrimp breeder box is. And so they've been advertising on their website these breeder packs that have everything you need, essentially, uh, in the aquarium for breeding shrimp. So I'm really excited to open it up, see what all it comes with. It's got some aquascape features and... Uh, uh, botanicals and food samples like enough to last a while and then uh, a good assortment of shrimp they make sure they get you a bunch of females rather than 50 50 or just whatever turns out they try to load it heavier with females so let's open this up let's see how it is and uh, let's start taking care of them and I'll update you guys on how quickly they breed also but we're gonna set up the tank in another video and uh, in this video, we're going to unbox uh, this breeder pack, which you can select any type of shrimp that they have uh, on the selection thing, all the different colors of Neo Caradina, and I think also a few Caradina and uh, others. So uh, you can buy them, and uh, this will get you started breeding shrimp. It's enough to start a colony rather than just a few to look at. And it's a pretty good deal as well. So let's take a look. So we know there's no shenanigans. We're going to look at the first opening here they give you some nice instructions about how to acclimate either fish or shrimp and uh, breather bag versus normal bag uh, and how that should go which is handy very nice uh, some stickers which I appreciate also and this is all overnighted and here is the aquatic arts botanical breeder uh, combo pack and look at this, it comes with choya wood, it comes with uh, some guava fruit leaves, some jackfruit leaves, some coconut husk or maybe banana uh, leaf husk, it's hard to tell for sure here. And then, uh, the yeah, the katapa almond leaves plus some alder cones. Now a note on these, we're going to set up a tank and I think you'll probably see that before you see this video. But I'm going to use the botanicals from just what they sent to set up this shrimp tank. But this is great grazing area and actual food for the shrimp as it breaks down uh, beneficial bacteria and uh, all sorts of nutritional uh, fungi and little microorganisms will colonize it. And also the choya wood really produces a nice hiding spot for the shrimp, for the young shrimp. Um, now I'm gonna keep these shrimp without fish just to see how many I can breed in say six months and keep you guys updated. But you can keep them uh, lots of different ways, you know, with fish in a community um, or without. And I also ordered uh, some other neat things that I'll be doing a species spotlight on on their own. But uh, I got some of the miniature three horned, three color nearite snails, uh, the little miniature zebra nearite snails, which they eat diatome algae, uh, the hard algae on the side of your tank, and uh, do a really good job of it. 
Now, I don't, you guys probably don't want to see me unbox every single thing here, but the other thing that we have that I wanted to show you guys, uh, oh, and I unboxed it just right now, which is great, is freshwater limpets. Now, these are in the Nearite family, apparently, but they're very uh, interesting looking. So I ordered three of these. They're really affordable, uh, and they uh, are a freshwater kind of filter and surface feeder, uh, I believe. So I'll be making a video more in depth about these, but they look like uh, like a little limpet or as they used to be called, um, China uh, Chinaman hats, which probably isn't a proper term anymore. But uh, that's what they used to call it because they look like the hats traditionally worn in the rice fields. Um, now, also, they send you a food sample pack with this starter pack, which is essentially free because you're just paying pretty much the regular price for the shrimp. You're actually getting a discount, and they're heavily loading it with more female shrimp than male shrimp so you can breed more. But I happen to know for a fact that this pollen granule stuff, the yellow stuff, is awesome. And when you put that in your tank, it sinks down and then it catch, collects air like a Mentos in a Diet Coke, and then the whole thing rises back up. And as your shrimp eat it, sometimes they catch a ride back up with it. Then there's this snowflake stuff. Oh, and then it falls back down into little bits and dissolves, and they eat it. But it's super nutritional. That bee uh, pollen uh, is really nutritional. It's, I think it's basically what the, the, uh, the bees feed some process of their development. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong about that. Anyways, so this snowflake stuff is also their in-house uh, shrimp fruit food brand. But I know that my quarries and catfish and uh, plecos also really like to eat it too. Same with snails. Snails love it. And then we've also got these sinking pellets that are for shrimp. So this is enough food to last almost six months if there's only two, sh or, or if there's only uh, like ten or twelve shrimp. Uh, people really overfeed their shrimp, but that's enough food to get us going to the point where we can probably sell some for profit and use the profit to get our own shrimp. Now, what's cool is they also give you a piece of moss. Uh, they pick out uh, various kinds of moss, but they have either peacock or Christmas or uh, Java. Um, and then they, they send you a nice humid, nice chunk of moss, and they give you some monofilament or fishing wire so that you can attach it to the choya wood, and it will graft onto there over the course of a few weeks uh, to a few months, depending on your setup. And so that's really cool because the contrast with the shrimp is going to look cool and everything. And uh, even though I didn't order a bunch of plants, I might add a few plants from my own tanks to the for the shrimp to munch on and also to help cycle the tank. But I'm just going to use pretty much strictly what they gave me in this kit to stock that tank. So let's take a look at the shrimp part of it. All right, so laid out here, I've got a drop cloth, so I'm not making a mess. I've got a light enough tank that's only a two and a half gallon that I can move elsewhere. Now, usually I set up these smaller size tanks for maybe 10 shrimp that I'm really trying to watch for traits, but we have a, a group of 10 females in here and five males plus a couple extras. So probably about 17 shrimp come in this pack for that. And then I also decided to buy some extra uh, freshwater limpets, which we'll do a whole species spotlight on these soon too, because they're really cool and they're kind of new to the hobby. Uh, but they will clean the hard algae off the glass, which is super nice, uh, because the shrimp don't always do the best job at cleaning that hard uh, granular algae, the powdered algae. Now, the other stuff that comes in this kit is super nice in that you've got botanicals, you've got hardscape and places for the shrimp to hide in choya wood, a couple pieces of that. You've got alder cones, which will, these are just off alder trees, but these are uh, organic and sterile uh, in that they don't have any pesticides or fertilizers, so you don't have to worry about that. Also, either guava or jackfruit leaves, uh, a coconut uh, husk, and then a bunch of uh, katapa almond leaves of different shades and sizes. Uh, and these are great to toss in one at a time or so. You don't want your water necessarily black water where it's tea colored or Coca-Cola colored, but it is nice to have something in there. And I've been pre-soaking a few other things to make a little aquascape uh, with what we have here. So I'm just using stuff I already had in my other tanks. And you can see this leaf is all nice and soaked and uh, 
now we will be putting it into this tank. Now, since it was in another tank, actually, of shrimp, uh, along with some of these plants that I'm going to add for the aquascape, it actually has beneficial bacteria in it. But all these plants came from uh, aquatic arts, and uh, they actually include moss and some monofilament line, uh, or fishing line rather, so that you can attach this to either a stone that you find somewhere or uh, to the choya wood and it will grow off there and graft itself onto there and the shrimp love to just clean it and eat on it, they feel safe on it and their colors really pop. So really, uh, you should have rocks probably somewhere around your house and I have a whole video, actually several, on how to get good safe driftwood and rocks no matter where you live some key notes and tips a lot of times i'll do 50 percent vinegar 50 percent water and i'll just soak the rocks overnight and then i'll just rinse them in water for another 12 hours or 24 hours and then uh, use those afterwards so we've got some choices for rock we've got some big ones for the center stones we've got some little ones for the kind of crumble so that it looks like a scaled mountain uh, uh, side and then uh, we also have big leaves and some smaller leaves as well as food and they actually give you enough food for about six months uh, if you're feeding properly a lot of people like to overfeed their shrimp but if you have a little dish and you feed them in a little glass dish or a little area like a flat piece of rock where you feed them consistently they're not going to go through that that fast now instead of using uh, a filter on this tank I'm gonna pull an experiment to see just how cheap you could do this. And what I'm going to use instead, and obviously I'll be monitoring them, if there's any problems with the shrimp, we'll throw them in their normal setup with a filter. And definitely check out other videos on how to set up a shrimp tank with a filter if you're brand new at this. This is more of an inquisitive video that I have uh, in the works in that I also have a lotus pod from Aquatic Arts that's been in another tank for over six months. This is going to be our filter, or rather this has all the uh, beneficial bacteria on it, yet the tannins have pretty much all leached out. So we're going to use that and the plants as our jump start for the aquarium because shrimp have such a low bio load. They are so low in producing ammonia and nitrates, their food produces far more if it rots away and doesn't get eaten. So if you leave them in there and they're eating algae that's just naturally p produced in their tank, you barely ever have a tank that uh, that will get fully cycled. And so if you were to throw fish in a shrimp tank all of a sudden, a lot of times it's not fully cycled uh, because of that. But I'm also using the water out of here, which is aquarium water. So there will be a start in the plants and on the botanicals of all of that and i marked this tank with a little aquatic art sticker so we can track it and the other thing is once the colony gets over once once uh this group starts having babies we'll probably kick it up to a 10 gallon but i want to see how many we can breed and how much money that would be basically maybe even sell it on my vivi.com account which by the way anyone can sign up for now uh, you can go there, basically set up a LinkedIn of all the aquariums you have and all the fish you have, and then you can offer fish for sale uh, just like you would on Aquabit or other places, except there's way more resources and uh, info on how to acclimate every species they sell and care guides and all sorts of cool stuff, including analytics about everything uh, going on there. But this kit basically comes with everything you need to keep shrimp alive other than a buffering uh, substrate. So you're gonna need to get either Fluval Stratum, usually you can find that at PetSmart, Petco, about 24 bucks for the small thing, and that'll take care of 10, five, or several two gallon, uh, two and a half gallon aquariums. And uh, as long as you don't have fish or anything else producing a lot of waste, and that includes snails, we're only going to have one or two snails, and they're in the nearite family, these limpet nearites, so they're not actually going to create a whole lot of waste. So they're not going to be fed anything special. They're going to be eating and cleaning some older rocks that I have set aside in here also. So they'll clean the algae off that, and that'll give the shrimp a jump start as well. So... Uh, one more note is other than that, you're obviously going to need a tank and you're going to need some dechlorinator. And depending on your water, you may need to use softer water or you may need to harden up your water. Now me, I have hardly anything in my water. My total dissolved solids are around 
10 to 30 parts per million. That's almost nothing. Once the chlorine uh, evaporates off, if I let it sit, it's usually at around 10 parts per million. And uh, I don't need to do anything other than add a little bit of hardness. So I generally add, my general rule is, half a cup every 10 gallons of crushed coral to an already active uh, substrate in the sense that it's active at buffering, not active in high in nitrates and nitrites so that plants grow. You don't really want to be growing a ton of plants in the same tank as you're trying to breed shrimp in because uh, it will raise the nitrites and shrimp really don't like nitrates, nitrites, ammonia, any of that, but plants do. So we're going to start by getting uh, some substrate and that is actually going to be Brightwell. I like to use Brightwell. There's a whole bunch of different colors of Brightwell, but let me show you that really quick. So I keep this big old bag, it's like uh, uh, a whole lot, 15 pounds, and so we're probably only going to need, you know, two to four pounds of it or something like that for that whole scape. Uh, that'll probably be plenty, and that depends if we want to use sand. But I like this color, and this actually keeps the pH around like 6.5, 6.8 to 7, depending on where the water is you're starting with. So I love this stuff. I'm going to go get this. I'm going to pre-soak it and rinse it a little bit, and then we'll start doing the tank. So I just wanted to open these guys up and take a look at them, and they are really beautiful. In natural light, they really stand out more, but you see we've got some with some really delicate little striped uh, zigzag patterns, kind of a hound's tooth pattern, another one that's red with some speckles, and then another one that is kind of a brownish red, uh, and then one that is zebra striped, yellow and black. And these are a harmless, and look how tiny they are, that's my pinky. Uh, they get bigger, they get to around the size of this one or a little bigger, and they'll eat all the hard algae off the sides that shrimp don't always get. So I think this is something definitely worth, one of, one nearite or a couple of these miniature nearites are definitely worth ordering with your shrimp. And speaking of shrimp, holy smokes, these gold shrimp look really pretty. These have been in transit now and in a box and jostled around and on the UPS truck and all that jazz. And these are the goldback yellow shrimp from the breeder pack. And uh, look at that. So it looks like uh, in the breeder pack, I mean, it says that there's at least um, 10, I think plus two in here, but that's more than that, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, it looks like. So, you know, they're going to toss in a couple extras. That's not just anything just special for me. They usually do toss in some extras. But it looks like a lot of females, and you can already see their gold back. So they came in safely. Everyone looks alive and healthy. They're, I mean, they still have their color, which is crazy. I mean, they're still lively. Now, the other nice thing I like about them is uh, Aquatic Arts is when you order, they do send a styrofoam box uh, as the main box, but all the packing is paper. It's recyclable. And so you can use that to wrap other uh, fish things if you're at a fish show or a local club or whatever, um, or for kindling in a fire or whatever to get things started. Um, but the box itself then you can reuse and it's a pretty, uh, pretty set standard size uh, that you can then use to ship fish yourself. And uh, I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't mention Vivi.com, which you guys can try signing up for. It's like LinkedIn for your fish tank where you can list whatever it is you're keeping and uh, on there you can also sell things. And that's what the plan is here is to kind of get some of these yellow shrimp and uh, see how many we can breed in say six months or maybe it'll be sooner. I mean, these are very mature shrimp. And with the breeder pack, they're going to send you very nice shrimp that they select out of the colony, and they're going to give you more females than males um, so that you'll be able to breed them. And a lot of these are saddled already, so they're going to probably have eggs in the next month for sure. They'll probably shed right when they get into my aquarium, but, but uh, that, that'll just be them adjusting. So... Uh, with all this, uh, these didn't come in a breather bag. They came in a normal bag, and sometimes shrimp come in a breather bag. So I'm not going to go through the acclimation process or uh, opening all the packs within the packs, but you guys can check out the video just before this of me using these materials to set up a fish tank with these shrimp in it.
or a shrimp tank rather. So the only thing I really need are a shrimp tank, a filter, uh, if you're new at this. If you're not new at this, you can always go filterless if you know what you're doing and you understand uh, all the implications of doing so. Uh, but we're gonna go with a little sponge filter uh, and a pump for that obviously. So that's something like 15 bucks or 12 bucks. And then the substrate, uh, which a bag of is 20 to 50 bucks depending on how big the bag is and what you need um, But we'll go over that in the in the shrimp video So really you're only spending probably another 20 to 30 dollars for the tank itself for a 5 or 10 gallon weight for a sale at Petco or PetSmart and uh, Then this has their food. It has their their habitat It'll keep their their pH and usually somewhat their GH good, but your aqua uh, aqua soil and substrate that will actually do that as well so you don't need to worry too much about that plus the foods enriched with the minerals so all you really need to worry about is that and then if you want plants in there you can also do that uh, and you don't want to dump all your botanicals in at once because they'll make the water too acidic or too tannic and these shrimp are hanging out in very clean water right now uh, and neocaridina are very hardy. They should do pretty well in, in a wide range of water parameters So I'm really happy with how this came. It's a really nice little pack and it was uh, $54.99 I believe was the, the the price of the the breeder pack and uh, You know, I think that's a great deal for 15 of high-grade shrimp that are full-grown uh, probably, I mean, six months worth of food for them uh, if you have a tank that grows algae and biofilm and then this will help that, uh, plus it'll look really nice. And uh, then I've also got some cleaning snails. These were, I think, a dollar twenty-nine each. Or no, these ones were more. These ones were the the two ninety-nine ones. The little limpets were very inexpensive. They were under two bucks a piece for this small size. So I ordered these too. So we'll probably toss like one or two of these nearite snails and one of those limpets in their little tank. And then we also got the moss, which is a nice splash of green. So you could order a couple plants, and then you need to buy a tank and or pump and aqua soil. That's it. You're ready to go. You're ready to breed shrimp. So let's do that. So check out the video of me setting this up. And we're going to check in in probably about a month and see how everyone's settling in and if they're breeding yet. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Remember the codes in the description if you want to get an extra discount on top of this crazy good deal. And uh, I vouch for all their other fish as well. So try out anything there at Aquatic Arts if you haven't done it. Get the 15% off discount. And a lot of times in the holidays, we do some gift giveaways from the list of people who use those codes too. So uh, you can get win, win, win uh, and also help my channel and help their company, which is breeding uh, a ton of shrimp in their facility. So they're going to be U.S. bred uh, as well as imported, as well as domestic bread. So they're going to have in-house bread, domestic, and then also uh, imported shrimp depending on the, the morphs. And uh, they're going to let you choose that, and the price will be reflected realistically in that. So I think that's really cool to give the, the consumer the choice because you can do your reading and see what's less likely to have uh, pr health problems, what's going to do better in your water, so on and so forth. So I really like a lot of what they're doing as a company. And for a pretty good-sized company now, I mean, they started as a few people when I uh, first hooked up with them. Now, you know, they're over a dozen employees, and... Uh, where they're headed, I think, is a really good direction, a really cool direction, and they're trying to be as good as you can be uh, while being, being a larger uh, size seller in the shrimp industry in America, which I really appreciate because a lot of people just turn and burn their shrimp, don't look for illnesses and uh, the quality and things like that, and these guys really do. They, they have a full-time shrimp supervisor for that room even uh, and then a manager above that too that over overlooks that as well so really cool and i know all the employees there take it personally the quality and uh, the uh, health of their animals so thanks for tuning in guys a like and a subscribe if you want to see how this project goes would be great and uh, i'll talk to you guys next time thanks and thank you aquatic arts i appreciate uh, all the hard work you guys do